I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I struggle with finding time to sketch. So I've made this video as encouragement to myself, but also for you as well. If you struggle to find time to fit a regular sketching habit into life, then I think this video is really going to help you. I want to talk about ideas and strategies so you can find time to sketch every day or let's say consistently because I don't like the pressure of every day. So let's address the issue head on. Learning to draw does take time and commitment. The same as learning any skill. I believe you can learn to draw and at any age. I started to learn at the age of 26 and it's just like learning how to cook or public speaking or something along those lines, you know, dedicating time, focusing on techniques, repetition and growing confidence are always the keys to learning something new, I think. I know it's a bit strange I keep saying you need to dedicate time when we are talking about how to sketch when you don't have time, but bear with me. So learning to draw is one thing, and yes, it does take time, but the time spent is cumulative. And if you practice just like 20 minutes a day, just like you were forced to practice your piano scales when you were a kid, then over time, these minutes add up. In his book, Draw Buildings and Cities in 15 Minutes, the super fast drawing technique that anyone can learn, Matthew Brame explains, though it may seem a paradox, working within small windows of time is actually a good way to combat frustration. Brief drawings help us to stay focused on practice. They help us to focus on repeated short bursts of practice rather than elaborately developed drawings that require far more time without necessarily producing better results. There are many barriers to not doing something, whether it's drawing or your homework or cleaning something or fixing something. There's always a reason you can't do it. And usually the reason is you don't have time. People have busy lives. People seem to be busy, busy, busy. And all of the time as well. I feel like I'm busy all of the time. But then I think, how am I so busy? I don't have kids. I don't have my family nearby. I don't have to commute to work, I have a part-time job, I have a full-time business running Urban Sketching World, and you'd think I have a business revolving around sketching that I would have all of the time to sketch, but it's one of life's great ironies that if you build a business around something that you love, you never actually get time to do the thing that you love. But anyway, I digress. So. It's important to have downtime from a busy schedule and a lot of people will kind of come home, relax, sit on the sofa, reach for the remote, um, switch on Netflix, whatever, and that's absolutely fine. There's absolutely no judgment with that. That's, that's perfectly fine. But maybe we can look at drawing as downtime too. A gentle, calming exercise that helps us be present, to observe, to kind of get lost with our, our own little world. So... So what's the solution? Do we make time or do we find time? I think it's one thing to consciously make time for drawing, like actually scheduling in some time to sit at the desk and learn things and draw certain things, etc. versus finding time to draw. So if we can integrate drawing into the activities we are busy with, this can be a way to find some time. This is where urban sketching really comes into its own. We don't need to put time aside for urban sketching. The point of urban sketching is recording life and recording the things that's going on around us right there and then. Therefore, like in some regards, you don't actually need to schedule a time to do it. Let's use Paul Heaston as an example. I don't know if this is still the case, but it's something I've, I've read in an interview previously. He looks after his young child throughout the day while his partner works and therefore he fits his drawing time around his child's schedule. So if he needs to take her somewhere or wait around somewhere he will sketch in his car while he's waiting and if she's napping at home 
he'll sketch one of the rooms in his house, for example. So let's talk about actual strategies to find time for urban sketching. So number one is carry your sketch kit everywhere. And I'm sure you've heard this before, but carrying a small minimal sketching kit with you is really going to encourage you to be able to draw whenever and wherever you are. So you want something that can fit in your pocket or in your purse. If you have fewer tools to worry about then you have less time spent figuring out which tool you should use. So your essential day-to-day -day sketching kit could be something like an A6 sketchbook and a pen and or a pencil, something like that. So strategy number two is get used to drawing around people. So in order to fit drawing into your life, you need to get comfortable with whipping out your sketchbook whenever and wherever you are. So this may sometimes involve getting your sketchbook out when you're having coffee with friends or while you're at lunch with family or even if you're in the pub having a pint. And after a little while, you'll get used to just drawing and chatting at the same time. You won't feel so self-conscious. Your attention won't be diverted by the sketching. You can talk and draw at the same time. And your friends or family members will get used to you sketching while socialising as well. So this is just a suggestion, by the way, and is by no means pressurising you to draw every single time you leave the house. Strategy number three is draw the mundane. And I am very guilty of this. I'm very guilty of looking around for pretty things, pretty buildings to draw. But it's not often that there's one actually close to hand. So therefore, sketching the house next door or the car parked on the street or people sitting in the cafe or the living room at home, they're far more realistic subjects. They're things that you come across every single day. And somehow, even when you sketch the most mundane things, they still are magical to look at. Take this doorknob, for example, which is in my friend's downstairs toilet. I actually made a video out of this as well, which is quite a popular one for some reason. Um, but it just came out so beautifully, and it's just a rusty old doorknob in a toilet. But yeah, so I think you I think you get my point there. So strategy number four is draw while you wait. Even though we are so busy, don't you find that we have to wait a lot? We wait for doctors or hospital appointments, we queue in the post office, we're waiting for kids to be finished with their after school activities, we wait for buses and trains, we sit at airports for hours and then we sit on planes for hours. These moments, this dead time, is absolute prime sketching time. Strategy number five is you don't have to finish. Just because you start drawing doesn't mean you need to finish it as a beautifully rendered uh, piece of art. Sketching is all about being fast and loose, getting the essence down with minimal lines. Make it messy, make it scribbly. You you know, just be free. You don't have to finish anything and it absolutely does not need to be perfect. It's more important to get your sketchbook out and just lose yourself for a moment, lose yourself for a while. And I promise you, it's actually a great form of therapy, but I reckon you guys probably already know that anyway. So strategy number six is size matters. So depending on how much time you have, it will determine the size of the sketch you can do. So don't start a panoramic architectural sketch when you only have 30 minutes. Trust me, I have done this. I have made that mistake. Consider the size of your sketchbook as well. So as I mentioned previously, something that's like A6 size or, you know, three by five inches, something around that size, it's a perfect size sketchbook to carry around with you every day. And it's also less conspicuous to get out and start drawing, especially if you're already feeling a bit self-conscious about drawing in public as well. Number seven is don't draw everything. So expanding on the previous point, if you've only got 20 minutes and you have all sorts of visual stimuli around you, just look for something particular that catches your eye and focus on that one thing. It could be one particular person, like the way they're sitting or standing or maybe their features. It could be a particular design or pattern on a wall, floor or piece of furniture. It could be a decorative architectural element, a particular statue, or even a certain tree or flower. Whatever is in your field of view that really catches your eye, just sketch that one thing. Okay, strategy number eight is keep it loose. If you're gonna go a bit bigger with your sketch and you want to fit in a few more elements than perhaps you will have time for, don't get lost in the details. Instead, just keep your sketch super loose. 
And if you want more information on how to sketch loosely, I've got a whole blog post over on urbansketchingworld.com about that. And for some more examples of loose sketches by Urban Sketches, um, check out the video I've linked above. Um, to get some inspiration on that. So tip number nine or strategy number nine is let go of the need for realism. So again, this builds on from the point before about being loose, but I encourage you to explore the more stylistic works of urban sketches like Felix Scheinberger and Inma Serrano and Marina Gretchenik, Rolf Schroeter, James Hobbs, Maru Godas. Check out all those sketches. When I look at the work of these sketches, I can just breathe again. I, I can just feel the freedom of their sketching. They don't care what other people think. They're just being themselves. And I know this may sound a little dramatic, but these are like, those are the feelings that flood me when I look at the work of those particular sketches. So use those sketches, find your own set of inspirational sketches who just really unlock that sense of freedom and playfulness in you. Okay, and finally, strategy number 10 is enjoy the process rather than focusing on the result. And I know I've said that before, but I think this is pretty much the key to it all, to be honest. It may even be the key to life. I don't know. If you're overly critical of your results, you're not going to enjoy the process. And if you don't enjoy the process, then you won't want to sketch. And if you don't sketch regularly, then you're never going to improve. It's literally a vicious cycle. So my personal advice to avoid this cycle is as follows. I find using a cheaper sketchbook is something that really helps me not be too precious and it gets me out of the vibe of every page has to be like a crazy piece of art. So of course you need a sketchbook that can handle uh, a bit of watercolour but you know we're not doing full-on watercolour paintings here so anything around the two three hundred GSM mark it should be fine. It might buckle a bit but hey who cares just just make a mess. It's fine. I really love Pink Pig sketchbooks for this. They are a UK brand. They're handmade in, UK, in the UK. They've got Bockingford paper inside of them. They're really affordable. They're just really great. And I will pop a link in the description below. They are a UK based company, but I believe their sketchbooks are available world, worldwide. So they're some of my favorite sketchbooks to help me not be too precious. Another point is do not share your sketches. Don't put that kind of pressure on yourself. You do not need to share your sketches on social media. Like these sketches can just be for your eyes only. And that really helps me take the pressure off, definitely. Another point is try to let go of any expectations. And I know this is easier said than done, but my way of getting around this is actually labeling a lot of my sketches as experiments. <laughs> and I, I even label them as experiments to you guys as well. It really helps taking the pressure off because if it doesn't work out, then you can just be like, oh, well, you know, it was just an, it was just an experiment. It's fine. It's no big deal. A final point is draw over the top of other drawings. Let your lines overlap. I find that this really helps me to loosen up. And I see actual urban sketches and illustrators use this particular method very purposefully to show a record of movement, lots of activity, the passing of time, that kind of thing. So I actually really, really love this effect of you know, letting certain elements of your sketch overlap each other. I think it's really fun to look at as well. My last point, guys, is urban sketching is a very different beast to drawing pretty pictures in your sketchbook. And I'm so guilty of forgetting this. And occasionally I make very public reminders to myself such as this video. So on that note though, if you are interested in drawing pretty pictures in your sketchbook, do consider checking out my course. Uh, you can join the waitlist and I'll put the link in the description below. We use photo reference in the course, but I'll teach you how you can sketch certain items from your travels and start creating your own record of life. And everything that you learn in the course can totally be taken and used to sketch on location as well. So I hope this was a useful discussion, guys. Well, it was kind of a monologue really, but we can continue the discussion in the comments below. If you've got any thoughts on anything I've mentioned in this video, then I would love to hear that. So thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.